Hi, I'm Morgan Dreamus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm joined today with Peggy Webb. And it could not be more perfect because you write the Southern Cousin series, and we're here in Alabama. And so, a Southern lady with a Southern mystery, it just, it fits. It's absolutely perfect, and it's my chance to come to Huntsville because my dear friend Deborah Webb lives here, also a writer, but we're not related. <laughs> it is, you know, and, <laughs> and, and you, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Webb and Webb, you would think that. Yeah, but you, you do you, you do write very different books. Of course, Deborah Webb writes very dark, suspenseful very books. Very dark. You, yes. on the other hand, you write The Southern Co Cousins, and it yes. is, I would call it, uh, maybe not a cozy in a sense, but it definitely has the mystery. It definitely has a lighthearted, fun aspect, and of it course, is. Elvis the Basset Hound. Yes. He, he's got to be one of your most famous characters. Well, I love Elvis the Basset Hound, and do you know how he came to be a Basset Hound? I don't. You don't have a clue? I don't. Okay, good. Um, when I started talking about, to myself, about writing a mystery, I spent my days at my desk just creating Callie Valentine, the Valentine Cousins, mm -hmm. the little beauty shop in downtown Morville, all the elements that cozies have, the, the amateur sleuths in the small towns. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, that's good. But it's not good enough. I need some big, big element that sets these books apart. And then suddenly it occurred to me about four in the afternoon that I live in the hometown, Tupelo, Mississippi, of a worldwide icon, Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I will make Elvis a ghost. I was pretty satisfied with that idea. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly my dear friend and companion, Jefferson, 15-year-old, 100-pound chocolate lab, stood up and shook all his collars. I said, oh, shake, rattle, and roll. Elvis is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he came to be a dog. I love that. That is, is it, so great. Because that, I was going to ask you, after reading your books, I know you yes. have just, I was like, she is just an animal lover. You can just tell Absolutely. the way her characters treat these animals. Yes. She's got to be an animal lover herself. Absolutely. And he was my companion and spent 15 years under my desk, foot warmer in the winter time, just a reminder, oh, it's time now to get up, please, and let's eat. <laughs> or, you know, take me outside now, or I'm going to pee on your shoes. You know, that's what Callie said in the first line. Elvis just peed on my shoes. <laughs> Well, let's talk so, about Callie, Elvis' okay, owner. Okay, sure. Now, she lives in a small southern town, yes, and I don't have yeah. a lot of experience in small southern towns. So right, when I read right. about her and the hairnet, which is her beauty salon, oh, absolutely. I just, I'm dying <laughs> with some of these scenes because they are just the cutest because everyone knows everyone else. And that hairnet is just that where you go to gossip. It's where everyone absolutely. talks about everyone else. It, it's the social center of Morville. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Morville is where I live. And I live in Callie's house. <laughs> wait, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. What, what is your middle name? <laughs> so, so when you uh, read about Callie's house and that wonderful front porch and that front porch swing, mm -hmm. you picture me sitting out there doing exactly all of that, except mm, maybe not the prohibition punch. Right. right. <laughs> well, one, one thing about Callie that I think everyone yeah. should know is she her motto in life is kind of like uh, she's she's very positive, and her motto yes, don't hurt anyone have a good time and I think right. that really carries the series because you want to know her you want to spend time yes. with her yes. everyone around her wants to spend time with her and I think that's what makes her such a great character thank you so much I I see that in Callie now mm -hmm. I think it was subconscious that I did all of that but my friends call me the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor. <laughs> Anybody with a problem comes to my house. And one day I had five people show up, just one after the other. I'd be showing one out the door and one in, and that like, Peggy, I have a problem. You gotta, so, you gotta get paid as a therapist. I should be. <laughs> so I think there's very much of that of myself in Cali. Mm -hmm. Very much. Is there so so? There's a lot of you in Cali, but yes, I have to ask. I think so. What else did you add to her that might not be so much you, but really makes her stand out as a unique mystery amateur sleuth? 
Well, Kelly has this, this penchant for shoes. She has an almost ex, and she's very torn about lovers. And, you know, I used to write romance, and I loved it. Then I got so old, I forgot what romance was, so I started killing people. <laughs> so, so Kelly and I are nothing alike in that respect. Mm -hmm. And Kelly struggles with a lot of problems that are unresolved. For instance, mm -hmm. I would say, Mama, you can't have any more money for gambling. Oh, but her mother Kelly comes in and she just raids yes. her shoe money and she just takes her and I'm like she oh just nobody would take my shoe money exactly <laughs> and so Callie and I are not alike in that way I'm very much more assertive but Callie is a soft touch and mm -hmm. she just is she's a sweetheart not such a soft okay. touch with the ex though no, she has not. made up her mind that she's getting a divorce. It <laughs> yes, just it didn't yeah. work out. She's found out some things yes. about the ex that yeah. don't work for her, and she's yeah. also interested in having a family. And so she she's is. decided I'm I'm moving on. And you can see that that really tears her up. She she has decided that, but she still has feelings for Jack, her almost ex. And of course, I adore Jack. Mm -hmm. My readers adore Jack. I mm -hmm. get so much fan mail saying, please, please, when will they get back together? Will they ever please? They seem really destined. I have to say, <laughs> they just, they seem just like they have yeah. their problems, but I'm yeah. like, they can work it out. <laughs> I think maybe they can. And did you see a little bit of that in Elvis and the Tropical Double Trouble, the fourth exactly. book, that they're well, beginning to move in that direction, perhaps? The, Perhaps, perhaps. Well, one of the things, Elvis in the in the tropical yeah. double trouble, and we've got we've yes, actually we got do. it here. We got to show everyone. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the things that makes this story unique from your others is this actually doesn't play, take place in the South. We get a little flavor of the right. South, and then we're all of a sudden on vacation in Mexico. Yes, yes. Yeah. I set that up wonderfully with Rocky. Do you remember when Rocky came on the scene in, in the first book, mm -hmm. Elvis and the Dearly Departed? I never intended for Rocky to be an ongoing figure, an ongoing character. But it occurred to me that he was so lovable. He had this teddy bear quality that I wanted to see again. And so when I brought Rocky back in subsequent books and I decided he was an archaeologist, I said, what a wonderful way to put the characters out of Morville. Of course, John, John Scanamelio, my editor at Kensington, who's quite wonderful and loves his series and is terrific to work with, said, I worry a little bit that if you take these characters, the Valentine family, Family down to Mexico, you'll lose some of that Marvel flavor that we love. They are still, they are southern <laughs> to the bone. They could be in the middle of the Antarctic and, and they, they will still be just those southern ladies that they are. You have to tell but, me what is going to be next for these ladies. Where, where are we going next? We're going back to Tupelo next mm -hmm. and it's, the book is called Elvis and the Blue Christmas Corpse. Oh, a Christmas. So it's is a, a Christmas mm -hmm. book. It's quite wonderful. I've used the Tupelo, Tupelo more than Morval in that particular one, but it's all quite fascinating because all the Valentine gang and Fayreen, and don't you just love Fayreen? Fayreen is like nobody else in the entire world. <laughs> she bless is. her soul. What, what do you say here? Ble bless her soul. <laughs> bless her soul. I mean, she's so tired, she's got to go sit on that sexual sofa now. So <laughs> I have fun with her malaprops. But this, this next book is set in the Tupelo Mall during the Christmas holidays with the holiday court and Santa and his reindeer and all the kiosks with Fayreen selling her jars of pickled pig's lips and all the wonderful elements that you love to laugh about in the series will be there. Yeah. And wait, wait, are we, are we going to get Jack? Are we going to see him? You will see Jack. Okay. Uh, you recall, we won't tell the reader what happens to Jack at but the he end. Has, he has a bit, he's, he's hurt, let's just say he let's does get hurt. Let's just say he does get hurt, mm -hmm. and, and certainly you, you will see Jack. And the role I've cast him in in the fifth book is just such fun for me. It's wicked fun. <laughs> Well, when can we expect that? Is that next Christmas? Uh, that will be, again, October 1. These books are always scheduled for October 1 the, in the hardcover form. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they come out simultaneously as e-books. So you can buy them on Kindle and Nook when, mm -hmm. when this one comes out. And then 11 months later, you will see this paperback version. And then one month later, in October 1, 
Elvis and the Blue Christmas Corpse. I love having a schedule because we just know what to look forward to. You know what to look forward to, and, and you know you can laugh. And uh, I've had a lot of readers say, Peggy, I just love it that I can pick up your book. And, and I know that no matter what's happening in my life, I can laugh. Yes. And, it, it did that yeah. for me. I was on, yeah. I was actually reading your book on the airplane down mm -hmm. here yeah. and I don't think so. my, my seatmate liked me too much because I was, I was literally <laughs> exactly. laughing. I was, I was. And, and they were kind of giving me the eye and I was like, <laughs> it's my job. What can I do? <laughs> I know. And of course, while I was writing this current book, Elvis in the Tropical Double Trouble, Michael Jackson died. Do you remember that oh. line in, in the Elvis? Yes, I do. Who, do, who does he think he is? Elvis ja or, I'm sorry, Michael, Jackson? He, Michael Jackson. Who right. does he think he is? Michael Jackson. Well, you don't get sent back that quickly in a dog suit to take care of these humans. <laughs> and those, those lines just come. When I get into Elvis' voice, those lines come. And by the way, I didn't intend to have Elvis have a voice in the beginning. I love it. I love, I love, because I often think, I have a dog of yeah. my own, and I often yeah. think, what is his, you know, like his thought process? I, I know he's, a, I know exactly. he thinks, I know he's, you know, exactly. he's, and I, I often wonder, and you actually took that dog and you decided let's. I, well, I didn't decide that. I, I, he came to me in a dream. After I had decided to make Elvis a dog, I mm -hmm. shut the computer down. I was finished with the day's work, had dinner, a lovely walk, a lovely evening, watching old movies with my dog, which I love. And that evening as I was drifting off, I heard Elvis speaking. Mm -hmm. And do you, you recall the prologue in the first book, Elvis' opinion on the Valentine family, Zen Buddhism, and leftover T-bone steaks? So Elvis started talking to me, and I just jarred out awake, and I said, what is this? But I knew it was something wonderful. So I raced into the office and started taking dictation. I just found a pen and wrote on the back of a file folder. And my scribbles, I just wrote and wrote until the dog finished talking, and the next morning I read it. It came down the back, around the corner, around this way, up, you know, I had to read it this way, and this way, every way you could imagine. Uh, and I said, oh my goodness, he has a voice. He is one of the narrators. And I love that it works so well because he is my omniscient narrator. He mm -hmm. can be, Elvis can be where I need him to be because yeah. the book is written in first person. And so Callie can't be everywhere I need her to be. So Elvis, it, it's, it worked. Well, it is an, a wonderful series. <laughs> I enjoy you. it so much. And I've been thank wanting you. to talk with you forever. And I just, I, I love know. that we got to sit down today and just learn more. Oh, I'm delighted that we did, Morgan. And I'm going to give this to you, your own oh. special copy. I bet it's signed. It's signed, <laughs> it's signed. And I'll personalize it if you want. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.